Hey, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. Uh, all right. So let's move on. We'll, we'll do this one really quick because it's just something that needs to be talked about. By the way, uh, while you were talking, I actually put the cage on the, the ZV and it's it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Perfect. Um, okay. All right. Here we go. The other day, we, we just happened to have hit on something that had happened with Rhodes Aviation. Uh, their flight 810, which was an all cargo 737 200, one of the older models that fell into the sea just outside of Honolulu. Uh, both the FO and the, the captain were rescued. A matter of fact, the captain was a pretty cool guy, got his FO out of there on time. And uh, they've now released pictures of it sitting on the bottom of the ocean floor, which, you know, thankfully for the crew, everyone was trained well enough and survived. They egressed the aircraft and they were all moved to safety. However, uh, what we also talked about the other day was the fact that. No one really trains for a double engine out, especially in the yep. airlines. It's it's practically unheard of. But the fact that this aircraft did suffer a du double engine out was something that we questioned right off the bat that, hey, what was the situation that led to this happening? <clears throat> well, it really doesn't make a difference anymore because the FAA has halted the operation of Rhodes Aviation and Trans Air. And on top of that, before they pulled their certificate, they gave them a 30-day response time in which they did not respond. So immediately, on as of right now, uh, within that 30 day period, they have lost their maintenance authority. So they are grounded. Mm -hmm. They're done. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. there was something else also in this article from a what is this one? This is the, the one from uh, a and I online, which basically goes on to say that this particular airframe uh, between 2018 suffered, I think, at least two single engine failures. One, at, I think it was at 2000 feet. And then there was another one. So there was one on April 18th, 2018. That they had a they had a, an engine failure on that one, and they got three backfirings and then a shutdown. And then there was another one on January thirtieth, twenty nineteen, reported another failure of the number one engine. Okay, and that report was less detailed. Okay, so I guess going back to, unfortunately, in aviation accidents do happen, and there's going to be a lot of research into this. But I'm sure there's some FAA inspectors out there that find <clears throat> found a problem either in the the aircraft's maintenance possibly or what they used as far as replacement parts or something else that, that you know they said that there was mm -hmm. a drive shaft failure off of the the first engine which was uh, possibly part of the issue but here's the issue double engine failure you're out of operation as a company i think that says a lot without even being too speculative what's your thoughts there Corey? Yeah, same. I mean, uh, you know, stuff does happen. Things do break. Um, and, of course, the FAA has the, one of the responsibilities to do some oversight in terms of maintenance as well. And that's that's a good thing, right? So if, you, if you're not involved in this um, sector, it's a good thing the FAA has such a close eye on maintenance. Uh, and as and as Mike said too, you know, a double engine failure on airlines and an air is quite quite rare. And so, super the fact that uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it's very rare that they would both fail at the same time. And we still don't have all the data to really parse through really why both failed. Mm. Um, all we really have a little bit of things to say. We don't really know the first one failed, but then it says a few minutes later after the first, the crew reported the second engine was likely overheating and would probably fail as well, which they would obviously keep that one running. Mm -hmm. um, but then it didn't. Um, so it's, it's like we've said before, also, when we talk about some accidents or incidents in the aviation community, we try to keep an open mind and not, um, uh, jump to too many conclusions too early, right? right? It's really good to be able to find the full report when it's out. And that sometimes takes years, honestly. So it could be a while before we can really, let's say, close this one. Uh, but, <clears throat> uh, just as you mentioned there as well, right? They had 30 day period to respond with whatever the, uh, whatever the FAA had asked them and they did not. So no, they didn't. that, that in and of itself is, is quite big. Um, I wonder, I don't, I don't really know. It's, it's not good. So yeah. look, we, we both speculated at some point that, you know, th this happens in, in aviation. <clears throat> Unfortunately, what has happened before is that an, uh, an air crew has shut down the wrong engine, uh, when mm. trying to go through a checklist and they've actually killed a good engine when, when one of the other engines was inoperable. And that's very hard to do sometimes <clears throat> in a, like a 737 because both engines both have different indicators. And even like in the Embraer, it was pretty difficult to do. But you did make very certain of which engine you identified, which one you pulled the handle on, which one you shut off. Mm. It was something we practiced a lot. So here's the difference, right? Uh, the fact that they didn't even challenge this is number one. Number two, it makes me, and I'm only going to speculate here, makes me think that something something was maintenanced on engine number one. They took the parts from number one and possibly swapped parts from number one to number two. That's something that's that that they could have done. 
or that they change the fuel valving configuration or, or something upstream or downstream in the fuel system that basically yeah. did it or it was lubrication based, right? They said it was running hot. Uh, you know, there, there could be a couple of reasons there that other things could happen. However, uh, if they were unsafe, and I hate to throw that out there when, when there's operators doing things like this, but the FAA doesn't take action like this unless they find something that is generally uh, pretty bold face and saying, look, you, this is not up to par. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully for these guys that, you know, the flight crews that are out there and are impacted, sorry, guys, uh, hopefully you guys can, you know, find safer landings there. But difference is maybe it's better in the long run. Who knows? And one thing to mention, if you guys are just kind of joining us for this particular conversation, just know that uh, Rhodes Aviation was uh, doing some cargo operations. Yeah. Right. So this is not a this is this was not a, a passenger car carrying operation. Mm. Uh, just throwing that out there in case you guys are curious. Yeah. And it's still and look, this also goes without saying this crew still did perform a, a double <laughs> engine out ditching in the water and both survived at, at night off Hawaii. At night off Hawaii, which, again, yeah. look outside of, you know, Miracle on the Hudson. These guys should also be praised for their ability as, you know, routine pilots to to achieve that is probably a lot bigger of an of I, I my mind just explodes when I think about that that they still did that and the fact that you can find the front of this aircraft intact which means it hit the water pretty good and they both still survived still fantastic news so yep. best thing you could you could you could hope for in that situation uh again we'll follow this one we'll see where it goes but it looks like right now there's a, an immediate conclusion from the FAA that they've they seized their uh <clears throat> Their ability to operate moving forward. Okay.